Have you ever asked yourself, who was the first serial killer in recorded history? While you may have learned about the bravery and valor and ultimate betrayal of the famous female warrior, Joan of Arc, you probably didn't know that one of her companions was a serial killer. In fact, this companion may be the very first instance of a recorded serial killer in history. In this video, we will take a closer look at the life and exploits of the medieval serial killer, Gilles de Ray. Gilles de Ray, or Gilles de Laval, was born to Guy Laval and Marie de Crayon in what is now modern day France. Not much is known about Gilles early life except that he had one younger sibling named René. Gilles was a bright young man and a quick study. However, he was also reported to have a short temper, which made him susceptible to sudden outbursts of rage. While this trait alone is not particularly unusual for young men, in hindsight, it may provide a chilling contextual element to his later deeds. Gilles and René would end up losing both parents at an early age. Reportedly, Gilles even witnessed his father's gruesome death in a tragic hunting accident sometime around the year 1415. This event may have been a pivotal moment in Gilles' life, if it indeed occurred. However, this report does involve some degree of speculation. What is known is that both of his parents died within the same time frame, leaving him and his younger brother with a substantial inheritance. After the deaths of their parents, he and his brother went to live with their maternal grandfather. As was common at the time, Gilles' grandfather, Jean de Creon, made several unsuccessful attempts at marrying Gilles to the daughter of a wealthy family in order to increase the wealth and affluence of his own family. However, he was finally successful when he managed to arrange a marriage between Gilles and Catherine de Tours of Brittany. They officially married on November 30th of the year 1420. Gilles was a skilled fighter who made a name for himself by being both a brave and shrewd warrior. As a result of his valorous actions on the battlefield, Gilles was made a companion at arms of the young Joan of Arc. Some reports even suggest that Gilles was her lover. However, this detail remains mainly speculative. In any case, Gilles would prove to be a valiant companion as he reportedly saved her life on multiple occasions. He even fought alongside Joan at the Battle of Orleans when the English siege was finally lifted. After Joan was betrayed and burned at the stake, Gilles began to leave his military life behind and pursue other things. Unfortunately for himself and his family, Gilles was a reckless spender and had nearly wiped out his fortune by the year 1432. And because he had squandered his wealth, he was even symbolically disowned by his own grandfather. Gilles' reckless spending continued on and he began to indulge in even more extravagant purchases. Unbeknownst to many of those who were closest to him, including some of his family members, however, he was hiding a sinister secret. He had begun to investigate the occult, and according to some, he was desperately concerned for his own wealth. He was quite literally willing to make a deal with the devil to get his money back. Some speculate that this was part of the reason for his unprecedented killing of young children around this time. According to Gilles' testimony at his later trial, he began killing young peasant children sometime between the spring of 1432 and the fall of 1433, and he continued killing until he was caught in the year 1440. Allegedly, he may have murdered up to 200 children during this time. While this may seem unbelievable, there are a few factors that make this plausible. For example, young peasant children as well as their parents would have been thrilled to have their children hired as servants or pages to such a wealthy and prestigious nobleman. As a result, these young, poor children were ideal targets for Gilles. Also, 
Gilles' influence and power made him basically untouchable. It was even said later that it was an open secret that sinister things went on in the castle of Gilles de Ray. Gilles' extravagant lifestyle began to catch up to him in 1435, when his own family members appealed to the king and the pope about his spending problem. A royal edict was announced that forbade Gilles from selling any more property to pay for his debts and needless expenditures. Meanwhile, as his fortune dwindled, Gilles began killing children at an even greater rate. According to his own testimony at his trial, he even lost track of how many young victims he had amassed at this point in his life. As Gilles spiraled financially and mentally, he began to engage in even more debaucherous acts. Eventually, he even got into a dispute with the leadership of the Church of Saint Etienne de Mermorte. He kidnapped a cleric of the church, and this act prompted a swift response from the Bishop of Nantes. The bishop began an investigation into the matter, and what he discovered would prompt the arrest and trial of Gilles. The investigation led to the discovery of Gilles' horrifying acts. Gilles reportedly began killing children in the year 1432. Worse yet, reports began to surface that Gilles' murderous activity was widely known, or at least suspected by many in the areas surrounding Gilles' castles. In the trial records, Gilles' closest servants revealed that he would request the best looking of the young boys that begged for food and or work at the gates. Once chosen, the children would be brought to him, and he would treat them well to lull them into a false sense of security. After this, he would spring upon them and strangle them to death. Sometimes he would torture them before killing them by hanging them up by ropes and hooks. He testified that he would perform illicit acts on the boys' bodies both before and after death. His servants testified that he would often cut them open and marvel at their internal organs. Allegedly, he would even behead the corpses and ask his servants if they recognized how beautiful the heads were. Gilles was also accused and tried for engaging in occultism because of his alleged attempt to summon a demon using parts of his victims. All in all, the trial was likely a sensation at the time, and as a result of the extensive witness testimony, as well as Gilles' own confession, he and two of his closest servants who were compliant with the murders were convicted on October 21st, 1440. For his crimes, Gilles was sentenced to death by fire and hanging. His sentence was carried out five days later, marking the end of history's first recorded serial killer. Thank you for taking the time to watch my video. If you enjoyed the content, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel. My goal is to put out at least one video each week, and your support with this simple gesture can go a long way toward making this goal achievable. Also, remember to click the notification bell so that you'll be notified when I upload more content. Thank you again, and remember, even a little light pierces much darkness.